Good morning or afternoon, depending on where in the country you are. Um, welcome to our webinar today. Um, my name is Ron Feldman, and I am the Chief Development Officer of Apple Pie Capital. And we are going to discuss how to finance multi-unit rollouts uh, in 2019. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of you. Uh, we have did ask some questions of you early uh, in the registration process. And just want to give you all some feedback as to uh, what the audience comprise, is comprised of uh, today. Um, about half of the audience has either one unit open or is looking to open their first unit. Uh, about 30% of the, of the audience has between one and five units open, and, and the balance of 20% has more than five units open, with a couple of you with more than 10. Um, so we're going to try and gear the content to, to hit the majority of you. Uh, I also saw that we have some of our competition uh, registered for this, and I want to welcome you, and uh, I feel flattered that you're here uh, listening to our content. So um, let's uh, look forward to moving things in the right direction in 2019 and getting some franchise units open. Uh, what we're going to talk about are four main things. Uh, well, five actually. Um, one is how to determine if you're ready to grow and how. Uh, what are the financial and operational requirements out there to, that you need to look at to uh, add additional units? Um, what interest rates are, and, and who knows with interest rates what's going on? And we'll also just, do, we don't have a slide on it, but we'll touch on the government shutdown and reopening uh, as well. Um, creating a financial strategy, a long-term financial strategy, and what's the best way to leverage our expertise and, and our ability to help you. Those are the five things that we'll cover today. Uh, we're hoping this will take uh, roughly 40 minutes um, with some time for question and answers. If you do have questions, we do have everyone on mute so that we don't have all kinds of noise going on. Uh, there's an attendee chat feature that you can just type questions in. They'll populate on my screen, and I'll try and deal with them as you answer them, as you ask them if I can. Uh, if there is a, um, if there's a, if, if I miss it, uh, I'll, I'll jump on it at the end, and I'll do a quick review. So with all that, uh, let's move forward, and uh, let's have some fun. Let's talk about whether you're ready to grow uh, or not. Uh, if you're open, if you're not open yet, you're, you're growing because you're about to open your first unit. But if, you've, if you're open, these are the things that any financial uh, institution is going to look for. One, that you have regular customers, that you have positive trends, that your margins are consistent, that your operations are running smoothly, that there is a demand, and best part is if you have too much business. If you've checked those boxes, then you're really ready to grow. If you haven't checked all those boxes, especially the second bullet of positive trends, and the third bullet of consistent margins. Those are going to come out in your financial statements, and you're going to have to do some uh, answer, you're going to have to answer some questions uh, when things get into the underwriting process. In terms of planning your growth, these are some self-reflective questions. And by the way, this deck will be available to everyone uh, afterwards. We'll send it out. Um, we're actually recording this as well, so if you have partners or other folks that you think might benefit from it, they can get it. Um, what is your financial capacity in the next one to three years? And then as important or even more important, what is your operational capacity? And we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that. Uh, is there territory in your current brand that's close enough to match your internal infrastructure? If not, should I consider diversifying and looking at other brands to maximize my internal footprint? So your question is, do you expand in one brand into more geography, or do you stay in the same geography and expand from one brand to being a multi-brand franchisee? And I saw that was a couple of the uh, questions that in the registration um, that, we, that we got. Um, how do you benchmark against like-size franchisees in your system? Are your sales in the top quintile? Are your sales in the top half? Are they in the bottom half? Sales don't necessarily mean everything. It depends on the market that you're in, and sometimes people with lower sales have higher margins. So there's no quick and scientific answer, but you have to know where you stand. And then last, and something we always preach, is what is your succession and exit strategy? How long do you plan on operating these units? And then when you're, when you're done operating them, are you going to 
give them or sell them to your to your children, to your management team? Are so you going to sell into a consolidation? Obviously, those plans all change and they're very fluid, but you kind of have to have an idea of what you want to accomplish so that you can place the correct financing uh, vehicles and facilities in your plan. Here are some other what-if questions that I think are very relevant uh, for someone looking to open multi-units. Um, what if instead of opening multi-units, you were able to buy a network of units and that would double your size? What if you were able to get a bunch of territory in a new brand? What if, and then this third one actually happened to a client of ours. What if I built two units, he was planning on opening them six months apart from each other and he ended up having to open them one week apart from each other? What would that do to your infrastructure? What if you were able to get your hands on a couple of distressed units that made you not focus on your own business, but instead focus on those units to turn them around, and you didn't have any time to manage your own units? How would any of these scenarios affect your current operations? What you don't want to risk is any degradation in your current operations to facilitate your growth plan. You want to make sure that your current operations can handle the, your growth plan, and you want to make sure that your management team and, and, your, your, and, and your financial and professional team, talking about your lawyers, your accountants, um, if, you have, if you have a uh, real estate broker, that everyone understands you know, where, you're go, where you want to go and that everyone's in alignment on your plan. If you want to grow organically, you generally have to do it one unit at a time. Sometimes you can do two or three, but that depends on the real estate markets and your financial capacity. The positive is that it lets you handpick the locations and to develop them from the bottom up, and you have 100% control of those units. Uh, the flip side is that developing units and operating units are two completely different um, jobs that require two completely different skill sets and doing site selection permitting construction and hiring and training will definitely take some time out of your week that if you don't have a great management team you'll lose some operational efficiency the other issue is if you're in some brands that have membership models where they take a year to 18 months to hit positive cash flow, but once you're there, you have recurring revenue, and it's great. It, it, you really need deeper pockets if you're in those kinds of brands versus a food brand where you have cash flow from day one. So you want to make sure that you have your development schedule aligned with your financial capacity. What are the requirements needed? You need equity. Uh, one of the questions was, how do I do 100% financing? And, and the answer to that is pledge other collateral. You're not going to do it based on the business. Uh, the good news is in SBA, you can generally do it with as little as 10% down, maybe not on unit one, but certainly on, on incremental units. And if you're using conventional lending, 20%. There, everyone's going to look for you to have cash reserves post-transaction of three to six months of your fixed expenses. Your fixed expenses would be your rent and your debt service payment and your utilities. That your current locations are covering their existing debt at 1.25. That, that means that if your debt service is $100,000 a year, that you're showing EBITDA, or not EBITDA, you're showing true cash flow of $125,000. Um, if in fact it doesn't, then you need to look at projection-based lending for your growth. If it does, you might be able to get a development line of credit and use your existing cash flow to fund your growth. The former, meaning the projection-based lending, is going to cost you more um, in terms of rates and fees, but it lets you grow faster. And one of the big takeaways that you should have from this webinar and in general is that you shouldn't let interest rates or fees be a detriment to your growth if you want to grow fast. You want flexible capital. The cheapest capital is not always the best capital for you. Um, they're looking for debt to EBITDA ratios of less than four to one. So if you have 100,000 of EBITDA, you shouldn't have more than 400,000 in debt. And that your global debt service post-transaction 
we'll have a path to 1.25, same metric that we had before. And if the bank or the financing institution understands your brand and you're in one of those membership brands, that they'll look a year out or 18 months out, whatever that is. And that's kind of what we pride ourselves at Apple Pie Capital on by having brand partnerships and really understanding the unit economic models that our partners use. If you're a startup, these are the pitfalls. You probably never applied for a bank loan for a business. You probably only applied for a car loan and a mortgage. This is a completely different process that you need to follow, and it's a completely different animal. Um, writing a business plan, doing projections, all those things are required in order to uh, open a, a franchise business. Uh, one of the big pitfalls is that people use up all their cash on unit one. You need to go into this with a plan. If you want to open three units, five units, you need to talk to someone like us or our competition and have them help you allocate what of your personal assets you should use and when. Uh, relying on the FDD for all of your costs and in, in, in startup, the one thing FDDs never have generally is enough working capital. Uh, we've never seen businesses fail because they had too much working capital, unless, of course, the person went out and bought a Porsche with their working capital. Um, and you want to make sure that you have enough of a cushion in your project costs. Uh, and then last, you know, selecting the right financing source, source or path. Um, all those things are the biggest pitfalls we see in startups, and a bunch of you were, that I saw in the registration are startups. So keep these things in mind. Uh, the big takeaway here, as a rule, preserve your personal liquidity as much as you can and ensure you have enough cash to reach break even based on the brand that you're getting involved with. Again, that can change from zero in some brands, you, you know, they're break even on day one, or I've seen brands where it takes 18 to 24 months to break even. Both are good business models. It's a question of, of which brand you're involved in. How do you do it? Well, you can use cash. Cash is always easy. Yours or someone else's. You can do a security-backed line of credit where you basically hock in your stocks to fund your business growth. Uh, that comes with a couple of pitfalls, especially in a volatile market such as we've been experiencing. SBA is probably the number one way that first-time units and second-time units uh, are financed. Uh, 401k rollovers are another strategy that folks use their 401k as their partner to open franchise units. I will tell you that using up all of your 401k on the first unit when you want to open four or five is generally not a good plan. That's why you need to talk to someone like us. And then there's other ways of doing it. You know, angel money, it's, uh, you, you can do all kinds of crazy things. Uh, you know, unsecured business lines of credit. All of those things are generally not a good idea. Uh, the, the most common way to do it is to use a combination of your cash or your 401k and an SBA loan. Uh, if you're in a brand where SBA doesn't apply, uh, Apple Pie Capital has partnerships with a bunch of those brands, especially in the salon suite industry. And we're happy to do startups in those brands as well. If you've got two to five units, the biggest pitfall and challenge that we see is people run out of cash because they used all their cash on unit one. That's generally what happens. And now they don't have any cash to open unit two. Or they had they started up a little slower than, than someone else. Um, and they went and took one of these risky uh, merchant cash advances, online lenders. Um, those things are, are the devil in if, if things aren't going well. They generally have very high interest rates and very short repayment periods. What you want to do is have the longest amortization that you possibly can and the lowest minimum uh, monthly payment as you possibly can. Interest rate and fees are secondary to those two metrics. Um, the other thing we see is people taking the cheapest capital route, which prohibits their ability to grow. 
or that they have un- unprofitable units and then they try to grow out of being unprofitable by opening more units. Then you end up with two unprofitable units instead of one. Uh, we got a question uh, from somebody. I'm putting 33% down on unit one. What will I be putting down on unit two? I can't answer that question uh, generally. Depends on the brand that you're in, what type of financing you're doing. Um, but generally, we see uh, 10 to 20% on unit two, but that is brand specific and, and situational, uh, situational yeah, specific. So I encourage you, in fact, um, our director of marketing is auditing this. Uh, and, and Daphne, if you could have one of our LOs reach out to that person, that'd be great. Uh, how do you finance if you've got two to five? You know, the SBA we talked about. The Apple Pie Core loan looks a lot like an SBA loan, except that it's a lot faster. It's still got a 10 year amortization. As a rule, could it's either seven or 10 years. Uh, the difference is Apple Pie doesn't take your house as collateral or your securities as collateral, and it has a fixed rate. Many SBA loans don't have fixed rates. Uh, conventional franchise lending is generally not available until you have five units open. Um, some brands are are easier than others and can get conventional financing earlier than that. But when we talk about conventional financing, we're talking about conventional franchise lenders that don't take your personal collateral. If you're going to put up your personal collateral, then that's a completely different animal. We're limiting our lending discussions to you being able to use the business and your personal guarantee as the security for the loan. Once you've got five units open, you've got a lot more options available to you. Um, The biggest pitfall that we see there is folks that leave cash on the table. They've got embedded equity in their business And instead of them leveraging their equity, they're still using their personal resources to grow with. Um, Some of the other things that we see is many of the franchise lenders out there won't count everything in the project. So you end up only being able to borrow 50 cents on the dollar if you throw in the working capital and the franchise fee and all those other things. Um, Then the other thing we see is this is when remodels start to come into play with your existing units and people don't reserve for those remodels or refreshes and they end up in a cash poor position. Um, And last is they've gone to get the cheapest capital they possibly can, but it comes instead of a 1.25 to one debt service covenant, covenant, it's got a 1.75 to one debt service covenant, or it has a, uh, post distribution loan covenant, which actually prohibits your it doesn't it, it inhibits your ability to take out what you want to take from your own business, even if you're making your payments. So you really want to understand the growth potential, and there are plenty of strategies to grow without any cash out of pocket. Uh, and then you want to also just look at what is the smartest capital for you, not the, what is the lowest cost capital for you. Once you've got five units open, conventional lenders are out there. Uh, They will only generally lend on existing cash flows. So if you've got five units open and you want to open three more, you're going to need to have enough equity in your existing cash flow to cover the next three. Um, The Apple Pie Core product can give you the ability to blend your existing cash flow Uh, equity along with pro forma uh, lending for your growth. So if you want to grow faster than the conventional lenders will let you grow, uh, the core product is a great product for you to be using. Um, Once you're at five units, uh, there's SBA is generally not what you want to do. Uh, SBA is generally not a pleasant process to go through anyway, Um, but they're, they're pretty tough in terms of prior cash flows before they'll lend, and you might be bumping up against that $5 million cap because you've got five units open if you finance them all with SBA, and you might not be able to borrow more in SBA, especially in some of the high um, high uh, investment brands that we see. And one of the registrants, when I was looking at the 
at the uh, comments, you know, is at that stage, and that's that, that's something that we can definitely help with. What are the pros and cons of each of these things? Well, if you want speed, you don't want to do SBA. I'm sure a few of you out there are shaking your head up and down. Um, for speed, it would be the Apple Pie Core or conventional. Uh, personal collateral, again, there is no personal collateral in the core loan. Conventional lenders might ask for personal collateral. It's a, it's a situational thing. Uh, first unit financing, you're really limited to the core, the Apple Pie Core, and even that is in, only in certain brands. Uh, and SBA, if you're not in one of our uh, brands that'll do first unit financing. Projection-based financing, as I discussed, conventional lenders generally don't do projection-based financing. They only do existing cash flow financing. Multi-unit commitments, the, the, you know, the title of this, uh, SBA, they have a rule that every loan must be funded. If, if they give you a commitment, it has to be funded within 12 months of that commitment. And it's very hard to, to coincide the real estate with that. And it's also very hard to get a, an SBA lender to agree to do two units up front. Uh, if you don't want to have loan covenants, then the SBA loan is a great way to do it. Most SBA loans have no loan covenants. And if you're in a brand where it's either too young or it might be uh, a brand that has some turnaround issues, um, SBA is going to be your roadmap there. Uh, conventional lenders and Apple Pie really take a very brand-centric look at what we do uh, before we offer credit to folks. Um, talking about the recent rate hikes, many of you out there that have SBA loans or if you're considering SBA loans, um, a majority to a super majority of SBA loans are done with very a few lenders that will do fixed rate SBA loans. Uh, we have a bunch of those in our network. Um, SBA loans that have variable rates have no cap. So that if prime goes back up to 9%, like it did in 2007, when things were really good in 2007, but you know what happened after that, uh, your SBA loan could carry an interest rate of 11.75. That, that is money that's going right out of your pocket. Uh, what you want to do, if, if you have a variable rate SBA loan today, is you want to look at refinancing that. And again, I saw some of the comments there in, in the registrations. You want to look at refinancing that into a conventional loan or into an Apple Pie core loan. A couple of things will happen. One, you'll get a new term. So your payment will generally go down. And second, you'll get a fixed rate. And most importantly, you'll get your house back. So... Um, those three things happen when you refinance out of a variable rate SBA loan. You're also eliminating interest rate. Let me just go back here. The government just reopened on Friday night. Um, it might close again in three weeks. Um, if you're in the process of getting an SBA loan, you want to ask your lender a couple of questions. First question is, are you a preferred lender? If the bank that you're talking to is not a preferred SBA lender, then you need to switch banks because that bank is not able to uh, make the loan without sending the entire package to the SBA for review. They were closed 40 some days and they are way behind. So you will end up having a major delay. If they are a preferred lender, you want to ask them if they've got a funding number for you, a federal funding number. If they have the number, then you can close your loan without undue delay. If they don't, again, there's a big backup of 40-some days of funding numbers that, that did not get issued. And you want to make sure that you have enough time in your timeline to get the number so that you can close your loan and have the money available for the contractor when you're doing your, your construction. So uh, those would be the two big takeaways uh, on the government shutdown. Let's hope that the uh, folks in Washington actually use their brains and don't close the government again. Um, creating a financial strategy. You know, define your goals. What is your ideal outcome? Where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be in 10 years? Prepare your current financial statements, personal and business, and strategize with a professional. Your CPA might be a CPA that's great at taxes, but doesn't understand business. 
There's two different kinds of CPAs. You want to have someone on your team, and it might be someone other than your CPA, that can help you get a coach, that can help you get to where you want to be. It might be someone at your franchisor. It might be someone at Apple Pie. Um, You want to look at your forecast cash flow. How much of your cash flow in the next year can you reinvest for growth? That's a question that you need to ask yourself. You want to implement your strategy, and then once you have that next unit open, review your results and do a post-mortem. Did I hit my numbers? One thing I know is I've never seen a projection that was accurate. Every projection is either too high or too low. I've never seen anyone actually hit a startup projection, and no one should. doesn't mean you shouldn't do them. You want to see how close you are, and once you open your unit, you want to, you want to, see, you want to learn from your experience. The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again, expect different results. Don't let that happen to you. So what you want to do, the first goal, you want to be obviously able to pay your living expenses. You want to build wealth for your family, and you want to satisfy your partners. You all have partners if you're in the franchise business. You have a partner. Your landlord is a partner. Your franchisor is a partner. And your lender is a partner. In addition to your regular business partners. They all have a vested interest in the success of your business operation. And you want to make sure that all three of those things can get accomplished by what you're doing in opening your franchise units. Using debt to do that has pluses and minuses. You can lever your existing operations. You can lever your personal assets and grow that way. The positive is you still own 100% of your business. And once you've built your units out, and you refinance them or pay off that debt, you have a cash cow. You don't have to share that cash with anybody else. The downside is you're all in by risking what you've already got to get more. So you really need to be very confident in your operations and most importantly in your team. Because once you graduate from becoming a single or a two-unit operator to being an eight or ten-unit operator, your team is the most important thing out there because you can't be running all of your units at once. And you really have to have trust in your team. And you want to be in a franchise system that really knows how to put those metrics in place to help you manage multiple units at the same time. Equity. Well, here's some questions you need to ask yourself. First of all, equity is the most expensive funding, even though it doesn't sound like it is in the beginning. If you don't have the financial capacity to meet your goals, then equity is probably a good idea. Then if you're going to raise equity, what kind of equity do you want to raise? Is it just cash? Is it dumb equity? Or is it smart equity? And the answer to that is, do you need more than cash? Do you need coaching? Do you need another franchisee in your system to be your partner so that you can lever their experience? The positive to all this is equity has no debt service attached to it. So all of your cash flow can get reinvested for growth, unless, of course, you raise equity where they're guaranteed a certain return. You've got to be very careful there. The downside, however, is that equity holders are there forever, and they're going to get a share of your exit whenever you get it. So you've got to decide if giving up 25% of your business for a couple hundred thousand dollars, do the math. The answer to this is do the math, figure out what you think your business is going to be worth by looking at what your goals are, and then decide if that's really worth it. The other thing you have is partners that you can't get rid of unless you buy them out. So if you have active partners instead of passive partners, you need to listen to them. You need to consider what they have to say. And you you might have decision-making authority based on your operating agreement, but it doesn't mean that your partners are going to be happy with you. We've seen a lot of deals get blown up by partnership disputes. Using a hybrid, so using debt and equity at the same time, by that, we mean use a little bit, raise a little bit of equity or convertible equity or equity that you can buy out at a predetermined multiple and then use debt to get you to where you need to be is a great strategy. Uh, we see that a lot in a lot of the big box fitness uh, models where it's a couple million dollars to get things open or in the swim school models or the preschool models. Um, The downside is if your partners are going to have more than generally 10%, 
they're going to have to sign the franchise agreement and personally guarantee the royalties. And if they have more than 20%, they're generally going to have to guarantee the debt with you. And that precludes some folks from wanting to get involved because they don't want to have any um, any risk outside of their investment. So you want to make sure you consider all those things uh, as you're as you're executing on your capital plan. Buying a, a, existing units is a great way to grow quickly. Um, using your existing business as cash flows can fund all or part of the acquisition. You want to look at combining whatever the best financing options are to affect the right deal for you. And you want to talk to somebody like us, like your franchisor, to make sure that the way you're structuring it and the, and the, and the fact that you're doing it is a good idea. So uh, you, you might want to buy inside your own brand. You might want to buy inside another brand. Uh, both things have merit. Again, everything is an individual situation. This is something that we see in franchising all the time where people don't take into account the remodels and re-imaging while they're doing their growth strategies. The only place you see that that doesn't happen is in the hotel industry because in the hotel industry, they take reserves. But uh, we, you know, when your brand's going to do a refresh, it's going to cost X dollars. Depends on the brand and depends on the size of the refresh. If you're in an older brand, you can expect higher remodeling and refreshing costs. If you are in a uh, a small footprint brand, obviously, it's going not going to cost as much. So you can either pay cash for that, um, depending on how many units you have. You can do a global refinance or recapitalization and take those funds that you pull out of your business to cover it. You can get standalone financing. Um, most remodel reimages from good franchise brands come with a prepackaged financing option. We just did a very large one uh, for a very big wing chain. Um, the other thing you want to look at is if you're going to have to close your unit. You want to make sure that you don't lose your employees because you closed your unit for a week and you don't have the money to pay them because you don't have any sales. In this market, you want to keep your employees. And uh, you want to make sure that even if you're closed, that they still have an opportunity to earn their money. What should a capital markets partner do for you? And that's kind of how we couch ourselves at Apple Pie Capital. Uh, know your brand and specialize in your industry. Everybody, every finance, financial institution that I know of does franchise lending. But how much of their business is franchise lending? It's a different animal. Franchise lending is the only thing that Apple Pie Capital does. You want to have somebody that has different options instead of one option. If you're just going to an SBA loan broker, they're only going to offer you an SBA loan. You want to make sure that you go to someone who has all the options in their quiver so that you can get the right option that meets your specific needs. And that someone who understands your long-term goals and makes sure that the capital is there when you need it most, when you want to grow, uh, when, you want to do, when you have to do your remodels or your, or, or your re-images, and that you are always ahead of the curve and being proactive instead of being reactive. What's the best way to leverage our team? This is just a quick infographic. You know, you guys are on the left side. You're the franchisees. We have every option out there from equipment loans all the way up to conventional loans. We can do anything from 10000 to $20 million. Um, and we have... Our brand's pre-vetted with our lenders. We have our own captive money. Uh, we will have a solution for you as long as you qualify. And we want to make sure that we're not looking at one transaction. We're looking at your plan. That is, what our, that is what our mantra is. That is what we train our staff to. And that is one of our core values. If you want to see how much of your embedded equity you might be able to borrow, we have a built-in calculator, which uh, Daphne will put up on the chat for everyone. It's pretty simple, though. It's Apple Pie Capital backslash grow, where you can enter your current six months, last six months of EBITDA. This is very important for those membership-based businesses where they scale over time. Your last six months are going to look a lot better than your last 12. 
what we look at is the last six months, and then we annualize it. And we tell you what your borrowing power is just by you entering in four fields. You don't even have to enter your monthly payment. You need to enter those three out of those four fields, and we can tell you what your borrowing power is. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, and you can do it by yourself. With that, I think I got it done in 37 minutes. I want to thank you all. I have, let's see, is there any more questions? If we have any questions, please type them now, and we'll stay on the line until the questions are answered. If not, um, we will end it in about three minutes. Give you three minutes to type your questions in. Uh, and last, for everyone on the on the call, if you can just give us a thumbs up if you thought this was valuable on the on the uh, on the attendee chat, and if you want um, thumbs down, that's okay too. I I want to I want to know. We want to do things better. So please uh, please let us know uh, how you feel about what we gave to you today. Good. I see a lot of thumbs up coming in. Uh, where do we see the recording? It'll get a link will get emailed to everyone out there. I think that'll be done by later today or tomorrow. What is the maximum amount in dollars you can lend? Whatever you qualify for, um, we can we can lend you know, up for generally up to twenty million dollars to one one borrower. Um, the person who's interested in talking, we, we're we're going to have our team reach out to everyone on the call. Is there a pre preference to a particular legal entity for the purpose of qualifying? It really doesn't matter. I can tell you that if you're looking at ultimately selling off individual units, it generally makes sense to have a separate LLC for each unit that streams up to a holding company. Happy to have that conversation with one of our team who, who structures these every day. Um, but generally, it's a LLC for each unit that does not file a tax return, but that the in the uh, statements uh, roll up to the holding company. Uh, what is the maximum multiplier of EBITDA you can lend? That depends on the brand and the industry and the size of your network. I hate answering questions with it depends, but it starts at three and goes up from there. Um, We'd have to talk to you individually uh, to find out what your situation is to see what your uh, multiple would be for your individual situation. Um, uh, Nathan, if you want to reach out individually, I don't want to answer that question uh, over the whole group that's still on. What are you seeing in the marketplace more of new build buy sells so Bob, the answer to your question is it depend i hate to, I'm answering it again but uh is is um depends on the brand it depends on there's a big consolidation in the mature brands going on right now, so we're seeing a lot more uh bigger operators swallowing up smaller operators in those brands. Uh, obviously, uh, real estate is very tough right now, um, so it's a function of, of supply and demand, and right now the demand is uh, higher than the supply, so uh, real estate's a, a challenge. Um, so um, it really depends on the brand, I guess, would answer your question. Is there spousal's personal guarantee required? Depends on the brand. Generally, yes. 
The only way that it wouldn't be is if the assets that you're using to open the business are not held in joint name. If the assets are held in joint name, then a spouse's a spousal personal guarantee would be required. Uh, in SBA loans, generally the spouses must must um, must guarantee. I'm uh, seeing a lot of franchisers refranchising, good or bad. Uh, I think it's good as a rule. I think it's good for franchisors to have some units open so that they can do testing without making their franchisees guinea pigs. But generally, uh, franchisee locations benchmark higher than franchisor corporate locations. So, uh, again, depends on the system, but I think in general that's a good thing uh, for me. My opinion for what it's worth. Okay. With that, I think we're going to go off the air. Um, you can see if you have questions, you can either call our 800 number or write to loans at applepiecapital.com, and you see the link to the calculator. And with that, we'll sign off. <laughs>